Hey everybody, this is PJ Riley from Lancaster Archery down here in our Lancaster Archery Academy today and we've got a new bow manufacturer for us to be reviewing here. We've got some Darton Target Bows. Got two of them here we're going to tell you about. I'm holding the Tempest ET behind me. We've got the Vegas ET. Great target bows from Darton that we want to tell you all about. And before we start, we have to mention a lot of the technology that you have on any compound bow originated from Darton. So Darton is new for us to review, but Darton by no means is new to the archery industry. They have uh, done a lot of the groundbreaking on a lot of the uh, compound technology that we see today. Um, but we want to tell you about these two bows, the Tempest ET and the Vegas ET. One is the Tempest here, standard riser. The Vegas ET, of course, has a shoot-through riser. Very different experiences there uh, that we're going to tell you about. Um, but before we run down the special features of each of these bows, let's take a look at the specs. The Dart and Tempest ET measures 37 and a quarter inches axle to axle. It's got an IBO speed rating of 310 to 315 feet per second. We got a brace height of seven and five sixteenths inches, mass weight of four pounds. It's gonna have an adjustable mod with draw lengths varying from 26 to 31 inches. It's available in peak draw weights of 40, 50, 60, and 70 pounds. And the let off is gonna be 85% that can be adjusted. The Dart and Vegas ET measures 38 and a half inches axle to axle. It's got an IBO speed rating of 315 to 320 feet per second. Brace height is 8 inches, mass weight 4 and a half pounds. You've got two options for let off. The 65% option is going to have adjustable draw length from 26 inches to 32 inches. For the 80% let off option, you're going to have adjustable draw length from 26 and a half to 32 and a half inches. It's available in peak draw weights of 40, 50, 60, and 70 pounds. Before we go into looking at each bow individually, I wanted to tell you about the most noticeable thing you're going to see on both of these bows, and that is this cabling system right here. This is what um, Darton calls their E system. And it's a very unique system that employs a yoke that comes through the roller and connects back to the cam. So what Darton says that does is that it equalizes the pressure on the, uh, the stress on the limbs. And then it takes some of the load off of the cam bearings because it comes back and hooks to the cam right there. The end result that we as archers need to know about is it leads to a very forgiving bow. So that is something very unique you're not going to see on any other bows besides these Dartons. If you can imagine on a standard, a typical bow that uses the yoke system, it's just pulling down on the outside of the uh, limbs here, which creates some stress issues on the limbs, just pulls them that way. By looping it back down and bringing it back up onto the cam, now you've got three points where it's pulling down. It just eases that pressure, as we mentioned, on the limbs as well as on the axle, uh, which goes through everything in there. And you don't notice it, I will say, in the draw cycle. You, would, you might think with it having a roller there that, that that's some additional string movement that you're feeling there. But when I was drawing, I didn't notice that was there. It didn't you know, have any different unique feeling to it. Um, so it just it shot nice and it is very forgiving bow, I can tell you that. All right, coming down to the limbs here, you can see we've got a popular style where we're starting out vertical and then coming to parallel. That gives you the performance uh, and the forgiveness of both, the forgiveness of the parallel, which quiets things down, and then the performance of those vertical limbs there. To uh, support this limb system of uh, vertical into the parallel, you can see we've got a nice long uh, limb pocket here. You want to have that um, support back here for the limbs as they come up in that vertical position just to make sure everything is held together because if they're going to separate, that's where it's going to be. So with this dart and limb pocket, it's holding everything together so you can feel comfortable that your limbs are going to stay where they are once you secure them in place. Moving down the bow, we come to this dart and grip here. So this was a grip that I really liked. It's very thin. It's even got a thinner P 
piece at the top here, right where the webbing of your hand would sit. A uh, nice flat spot here and the angle of that grip. When I put my hand in it to shoot, it's just absolutely perfect. And it kind of pushes your hand a little bit forward, which I found helped me with stability, more so than some of the more vertical grips. This is just a nice, natural, comfortable position. Um, and that grip really did, I, I think it did wonders for me. So shooting this bow, what I will say with that grip uh, and with the draw cycle and everything, this bow held awesome at full draw. When I was aiming, um, this is my regular stabilizer setup uh, that I use for target archery and the bow just sat nice and still put the pin where I wanted it, it just sat there, I was able to execute my shot. Uh, the draw cycle is nice on this bow. There's no real high points that you feel like you have to get over to get back to full draw. So on both of these bows, the cams employ both a uh, cable stop and a limb stop. And this cable stop here, it's got this big long flat pad there that comes around that thing hitting the cable, it feels like a limb stop anyway. You can use the limb stop for added stability, but I really like the feel of this big pad hitting that cable there. It feels rock solid. There's not much give, not much sponginess there. But as we mentioned, you can tweak the let off a little bit. So how you would do that is with the limb stop. At its max position, that is when the uh, cam rolls around and the cable stop hits the cable, if you set the timing of the limb stop right there, that's going to be your max let off. If you slide it forward a little bit, that's where you're going to be able to reduce that let off just a little bit in order to play with, you know, if you want more holding weight, that's how you would do that. At the shot, this bow, you know, performs like any other compound bow. I was shooting a hinge with it. Um, so just going through my normal shot process, this bow responded to that. I will say that um, as the string came forward and hit the string stop, I did feel a little bit of vibration in my hand, but it's not that vibration uh, that you worry about where the bow really wants to jump. It wasn't that, the bow sat still, but I could just feel a little bit of the vibration in my hand, which isn't surprising given that the grip is just a machined part of the riser. There's nothing added on there, it's a part of the riser, and so I'm just feeling that as the string comes forward and hits that stop. We have to remember that this thing is generating a tremendous amount of speed with an IBO speed rating up to 315, that's really spitting them out there, uh, so there's a lot of force behind it. Um, but it is very nice and comfortable to shoot. Okay, so now we have the Vegas ET. Uh, that E again comes for the E system um, on the yokes there on the cam. But the biggest difference that you're going to see, of course, is the shoot through riser. Uh, the shoot, the addition of having both sides of the riser connected there. This bow really had no vibration. That extra riser piece, the reason that it's there is for rigidity, and you can definitely tell a difference, that this bow feels very rigid in the hand. Now, what's unique about the um, Dart and Vegas ET is that this bow is ambidextrous. So you can probably see my cable arm connection here. It's connected right on that spot. We've got an identical one on the other side. So what you would do, this right now is set up for right-handed. If I wanted to make it left-handed, I would just move this cable arm over here. Now you're saying, well, that's going to create problems with the cams. Well, these cams are ambidextrous. What I would do is take my top cam, flip it over, put it on the bottom, take my bottom cam, flip it over, put it on the top, and then you're going to have the exact same alignment. Uh, you're going to, you're, Cables are going to move around to this side for a left-handed archer, you know, and then everything's going to orient off the cable arm being over here. You'll notice when you order these bows, they don't say right or left-handed because they are all ambidextrous. That's a great feature there from Darton. Um, so left-handers, we know you folks often have a difficult time getting bows. They're not made as quickly as right-handed are with the Vegas ET. There's one bow for everybody, so that is awesome. Uh, coming down, it's got that a very similar grip 
to the tempest. Again, that forward position there, which pushes the top of my hand. It is the most forward position of the bow. That just makes it real comfortable to shoot. And that angle, nice. Hand fits right in it. It's a thin grip, machined part of the riser. Um, everything that you want in a great competition grip, this one has it. Uh, coming down the bow, of course, out front, you're going to have your standard front stabilizer bushing. And then on the back here, you've got two positions for your sidebar or your V-bars, wherever you want to put them. You can get that positioning, that weight a little bit higher or a little bit lower if you want. Uh, whichever you prefer, that's always great. This bow uh, has an eight inch brace height. So this bow is super forgiving. That's about as big a brace height as they make. And eight inches is always forgiving. What that means is then you can have little mistakes with your hand, you know, maybe you torque it a little bit and the effects of that downrange are not as severe as if you have a shorter brace height. So that eight inch brace height is nice. As we mentioned, at the shot, this one has almost no hand shock. It's very comfortable to shoot. You can really feel the effects of that rigid shoot-through riser there. It holds steady. Put the pin on the target. It stays where I want it to stay till I execute my shot. Just a great shooting bow that's very comfortable on the line. All right, so that is the Darton Tempest ET and the Vegas ET. Two brand new bows for us to take a look at here at Lancaster Archery from Darton. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like it, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to click that bell to get notifications whenever we put out new videos. And as always, if you have any questions, you can visit us at LancasterArchery.com.